Welcome to a very special episode of Small Talk. My name is Nancy Guitar, and I'm with Atif Nanji. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, thanks for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. A while back, I posted on Facebook about the fact that I have social anxiety, and a number of people responded that they also have the uh, that same thing. And um, I was hoping to have more people do this with us, but unfortunately, a lot of people part of the anxiety is to be on camera. So obviously, Atif, that's not your problem nor mine, right? <laughs> well, I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna try to hide it today. Okay, good. So, when did you first realize that you have social anxiety? Uh, you know, I probably first realized it in my mid twenties. Um, you know, it pro it definitely started a lot earlier than that, but I never really knew what it was. Right. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, probably about twenty, maybe around twenty four, twenty five. You know, I'm like you, like you, I never heard of that term way back when, you know, I'm, I'm much older than you are. And, and I always had, well, we just said people were extra shy or something like that, right? Yeah. So now I'm just wondering if it manifests itself the same way for you as it does for me. So what are some of those worst times for you? Oh, um, you know, when I look back, so I remember when I was very, very small, uh, I used to, you know, I was very, I just, again, I was, uh, my mom just said I was shy. I remember hiding behind my mom when I would meet new people and, you know, kind of hiding behind her leg. And uh, that's kind of my first earliest memory, uh, you know, that I can relate to social anxiety. Um, I don't recall much of it in my, uh, during high school, probably because I was too busy, you know, with my teen angst and lashing out and stuff like that. In, um, in university, I do remember um, sometimes being at parties or in group situations and just feeling frozen, like, like to the point where like the people were like, hey, what's wrong? Like, why aren't you talking? Like, is everything okay? And yeah. I'd be like, no, I'm fine. I'm just, just observing. And so and then I knew something was wrong. You know, like I, I wasn't um, interacting the same way as the other people. I just didn't know what it was. I just felt like I was just so scared of saying the wrong thing uh, to the point where it was uh, almost paralyzing. It, and, it, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, please go ahead. Well, I'm just saying it's interesting because, yeah, when I was, I remember as a young teenager and um, a little bit, in, again, in my 20s, for me, it was always a feeling that I don't fit in, that I was different from everybody. And rather than being quiet, I would just act up. I would say stupid things, you know? I would tell people, like, like I would say things like, oh, gosh, you're so boring. And I didn't really mean it, but I just wouldn't shut up. And I, to this day, I still do that. And then I get home and I think, why did I do that? Why can't I just be quiet? You know, but it's that I'm compelled to say stuff because when I'm so awkward, it's so stupid. <laughs> yeah. I think I did quite a bit of that too. And, uh, and then again, yeah, same thing. I go home and then I, it's just, it, uh, I can't stop thinking about it. I keep yeah. replaying every conversation I had that day and, and, uh, and, uh, and I keep on thinking, oh, I, shouldn't have done that you know you're, you're and I keep you know a lot of negative self-talk you know talking yourself down um and then maybe that's what contributed to me uh eventually not wanting to talk then when I was in public around other people just in, just fear of saying the wrong thing and then regretting it later I'm just wondering what when you know you, when you said you played back in your head I'm wondering if again because I do the same thing if that's also part of it part of being social anxious is to get home and beat yourself up and replaying and I actually will Play it again, but it but I'll change it around in my head so that now I look better. But it's only in my head, you know. <laughs> really, I do the opposite. <laughs> um, I think that's part of it. You know, I often think that um, that it does. It has a lot to do with having an overactive brain. You know, when uh, I don't know if you have that issue where sometimes it just feels like you can't uh, quiet it down. Yeah. Um, so I think that your brain has just uh, got so much energy; it's got to put it somewhere, and sometimes it goes into a bad place. So. Do you have any little tricks that you use to make yourself feel better when you're in that, that awkward situation? Well, you know, uh, I don't really get that so much anymore. Um, I certainly still feel awkward, but I don't get the same paralyzing anxiety. And I think that just came almost like, I, you could almost call it exposure therapy. And this job has been really great for that because I see people all day, every day. I'm talking the whole time. 
uh, it's helped me to build a lot of confidence um, talking to other people. Um, also, uh, you know, a few years back, I was the secretary of the Rotary Club uh, in Chilliwack. And so again, just basically, I just, uh, you know, it was just exposure therapy again, just having to speak in front of a group, a room full of 100 people every week. So that really helped as well. Um, in terms of tricks, I mean, the so actually this kind of relates to the, when it really came to a head was during my, uh, when I was doing my master's degree, I don't know if it was social anxiety, I think it was just general anxiety, but I started getting really bad panic attacks. Um, and, but luckily that was around the time I met my, uh, my now wife um, and she was instrumental in, in kind of helping me get better. So not only did she also give me, you know, a lot of emotional support and was really understanding, but she also uh, got me into aerobic exercise. And I thought, and I found that that was really, really effective in, um, in um, uh, decreasing the severity of the panic attacks and the anxiety. Yeah, you know what, what actually has helped me, I just realized like um, this was just not lo that long ago. It's just, first of all, admitting to people that I have social anxiety or like I used to make excuses when I maybe invited to somebody, someplace and I would lie. I would say I couldn't do it because. Now I don't do that. I just say, I can't do it. It makes me feel too uncomfortable. So that has helped me a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And then at one point in my life, I was taking some acting classes. This is when I was in my 50s. I did everything as a, as a late, you know, I'm a late bloomer. And the, one of the acting coaches said to me that you're quirky and to accept that it's not a bad thing, you know? So it's okay to be different, whether that difference is being social, uh, having social anxiety or not. So that's really made a difference for me. That's yeah, interesting you say that. I've often I've often wanted to try doing like an acting, like some you know local theater, some improv. Um, also because I, you know I also love attention too, so I think that <laughs> that will go well hand in hand with that, and also uh, you know also yeah. trying to get over the public speaking thing. Yeah, it's it's really good to try if you can. Like the first time is always the well no, I was going to say the first time is always the worst, but actually for me it's the second time is the worst than the first, because the first time I don't know what to expect. But when I go back to something the second time, now I know what to expect. Now I'm more, more anxious. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but unfortunately, we're at a time where it's hard to, to go out and try acting or getting on stage just because of COVID, right? So we're limited what to, what to do. But I would certainly encourage you to, to go for it. I mean, I, as far as I know, there might be still improv going on. I'm not quite sure. Um, the group I was with had to, had to um, end it because of the COVID. Um, one, one of the things I want to ask you too, like if you have say some event coming up, let's just say it's, it's two weeks from now, do you start stressing now about it? Because that's what I would do. Uh, like about some sort of event a couple weeks from now? Yeah. Um, a little bit, like I'll start to become a little bit more conscious, you know, and I'll, you know, just to go back to the, you know, when I first noticed the anxiety or when I, looking back, you know, in my early life, I remember when I was, you know, in my early teens, uh, being extremely self-conscious about my looks, especially my skin. If I had pimples, I wouldn't want to go out or I would, you know, I would, uh, or I would go, but I would just be miserable because I'd be just thinking about it the whole time, thinking everybody's staring at me. So when it comes to social engagements now, I don't worry about it too much, but I do kind of worry I'm like, okay, I need to make sure I get my hair cut. I need to make sure I don't eat too many chocolates, you know, a couple of weeks ahead of time. Cause I'm, that's still in the back of my head. Right. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. and and, make, and that's pretty much it really just making sure that I'm going to be, that I feel confident and, and presentable when I go right. out. See, this is again, where I think we're a little bit different. Maybe like if let's just say you and I were going to meet somewhere to talk about something and, and you said, meet me at such and such. I would start worrying about that now. You know, yeah. what if I couldn't find you? What if you weren't there when I was supposed to, you know, when you said you were going to be there and like, now what am I going to do? Like I, I start playing that in my head ahead of time. So by the time it comes to actually going, I'm ready to cancel out. <laughs> and, and my friends that my friends now know me enough that they will um, help me with that. And, and rather than me have to wait for that or meet them somewhere, they'll often come and pick me up instead, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, like it's, it's not getting any better for me. Let's just say that. It's not getting any better. I'm in my 70s and I'm thinking now it's not likely to at this point. But for you, right, your job, you're a notary, right? You're a notary. Yep. Now people come to you for that, correct? Yeah, yeah. So if you had to go say to somebody's home and perform whatever it is you do when people come to you, would that bother you? 
Not really, because I've done it so much now. I mean, I've been, in, and again, I got a really, you know, I've, I've been very lucky. Just my life circumstances have, um, especially in the last about 10 years, have really, I mean, the worst of it was about 10 years ago. Oh. And, but since then, you know, meeting my wife, moving out here uh, to, you know, coming from Vancouver to Chilliwack, I mean, it, it, there, there is some truth that it's a little bit slower pace out here. Um, so it's a little bit less, uh, less noise in the brain, I would say. Um, plus the job as, as well uh, has all kind of helped me um, get better. Um, it's in uh, the job in particular, because there's, like I said, I meet so many people and every day I'm put on the spot with questions. So of course the first couple of years, you know, when I first started, you know, uh, I wasn't very confident and, uh, and I did a lot and I sweat a lot through in my back. I would soak a lot of shirts throughout the day, just cause I'd be constantly put on the spot, not sure if I know the right answers and then right. feeling very bad that I didn't know the answers to these questions people are asking. By now, most of the time I can answer most people's questions pretty easily and I've done it a hundred times. So right. I don't get as nervous about that type of thing. And then hospital visits, home visits, again, I don't really, I've done it enough that I don't really worry about it. So again, I think ex that, uh, you know, I keep going back to that term exposure therapy. For me, that's been most effective with anxiety, social anxiety is, I mean, you do it enough times, it's not going to, body as much anymore but I mean you know at your age by now you know who you are right so yeah. I mean there's no point in trying to change for anybody um you know and I hopefully you know one day I can know who I am and be comfortable with that too yeah I think I'm still working on that though the thing that one of the things that that um, uh, bothers me a little bit is when people say like they want to give you advice or oh, just do this or just do that and I often think well if it was just a matter of just doing whatever I think I would have done it you know <laughs> Like what may work for you doesn't mean it's going to work for me or vice versa. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I also know some people who, who are so bad that they've taken medication for it. Have you ever considered that or done that? I did actually. So uh, in my, in my twenties, uh, it got pretty bad. I was on uh, clonazepam for a while and, and I wouldn't recommend that to anybody, to be honest. Um, it, it, for me, I had to, number one, I was taking it during my grad during, when I was doing my master's and I found, and it got, uh, and it made my head so cloudy. I couldn't even finish my assignments. Like I got through everything, but it would take me so long because I would read a paragraph, especially when I was doing uh, legal um, uh, legal philosophy, because it's, it's quite dense, dense uh, text. And I found that I couldn't get through a paragraph without forgetting the first few sentences. Like as soon as I would start reading and I would force myself to read through the paragraph, but by the time I got to the end, I forgot the beginning. Right. So it was just it was just uh, inhibiting my my cognitive abilities too much. So I had to get off of it. But the withdrawal, I don't know if you've ever been on benzodiazepines, but the no. withdrawal coming off that stuff is is really terrible. Right. Um, yeah, it was. Um, I wouldn't recommend benzos to anybody. You can uh, maybe for some severe cases. I mean, I, I, I'm no pharmacist. I'm no doctor, but. If you can avoid it, uh, I would advise anybody to, to stay away from that stuff if they can. Okay, good, good advice. I think that's going to, like my body, like I try, try not to do any kind of uh, medication if I don't have to. Like I, right now I just take something for high cholesterol, but my body just says drugs, no, <laughs> it doesn't like stuff. And I tend to suffer a lot of side effects. So uh, for me, I, and I didn't even realize that, that you could take some uh, medication for social anxiety, you know, it just never dawned on me, right? Well, it's basically a tranquilizer. It just uh, it uh -huh. numbs you out, um, and people will notice. You're not going to be as ex you're not going to have your same flair. You know your yeah. you know your same character, um, and you might be a little, you you could feel like you're floating through it, and you might feel uh, good about it. But I, I don't think it's I, I personally just don't think it's a good idea. Right. Now, do you have brothers or sisters? I do. I have a I have a younger sister. And now, the, does she also have social anxiety? Uh, she, yeah, I think she does uh, have a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. And like, well, yeah, I come from a large family, but uh, some, some of us do have it. And again, I'm the only one that does stage stuff or on camera. Not that, the, not that some of them couldn't, but I know some that absolutely could not, you know, and yet they're very, like, they're like the same as me. They couldn't want very uncomfortable walking into a situation where they don't know anybody, but when they are in a situation um, eventually they're entertaining everybody, you know, with their, their stories and their jokes and stuff. The minute you put a camera or a microphone in front of them, they just want to clam right up, you know? <laughs> so that's what I think is about interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Like the fact that some people were so bad, like you were okay, you were not, wouldn't have been your preference to be on cam 
camera, but you were well enough or not well enough. I don't mean that. And that's not the word I want enough. Secure enough, I guess, to do it with me, where some people just absolutely said, no, I can't do that. Well, I, I'm not going to lie. I did have some second thoughts. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad you followed through, though. I'm glad because so that we could discuss this back and forth, you know, and just tell people it's not the worst thing in the world. Yep. There's a lot of things, you know. Or if you if you're like me, where you're can be so bad, reach out to your friends and then have them help you with it. If they're your friends, they're going to do it. Yep. Right. Yeah, you, you and know. also I want people to, I really don't want people to feel like they're alone. I mean, when, yeah. when you, especially when you have these anxiety issues, you re, it really feels like nobody understands. Um, but there's so many people that experience this stuff, but everybody tries to hide it. You know, um, like right now you can't see it, but my back's sweating, you know? So, uh, so don't uh, just, yeah, uh, just know you're not alone out there. There's lots yeah. of people that experience the same thing. Great, that's great. Well, thank you, Ada. Thank you so much for, for doing this with me. I appreciate it. And uh, I just want to thank the audience, too, for we really hope that what we had to say here would help you a little bit. And remember, as they just said, you're not alone. You can reach out to us, right? Absolutely. Anytime. Yeah. So if you ever feel the need to reach out to us, um, it's just on Facebook. If they want to get a hold of you, could they, would you be OK with them doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Facebook, uh, my contact information is on our website. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty easy to reach in this town. Okay, okay so you better. Well, yeah, we'll put your name up at the uh, It'll be on the credits so people will be able to see uh, your name there. So thanks again for doing this for me. No problem. Anytime. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Stay safe and all those things. And peace out. All right. Take care. Peace. <laughs> okay. Just. A sense of community. Till the wax a place to be. A sense of community where you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley, rolling through paradise with me. It's multicultural, you're sure to see it all. Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark. Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see.